guys, it's Nina from VR Focus and I'm joined by... Uh, Dominic Collins, the General Manager of International for Jaunt. So tell me a little bit about Jaunt. For those of you who uh, don't know who Jaunt are, they are a pretty important virtual reality company. That's very kind of you. Um, we would say immersive content these days, but yeah. So Jaunt is um, a leading player. We partner with companies globally to produce and distribute immersive content. So we're kind of probably best known for... Uh, the work we've done over the last four or five years, creating high quality cinematic virtual reality films uh, with brands and with IP holders and uh, media companies and so on. Um, but also we're excited to be launching at uh, CES, our XR platform, which really kind of revolutionizes the distribution side of our business. So we can also work with partners to help them to not just create great content across VR and AR and all the other Rs, uh, but also to be able to then distribute that at high quality uh, to a global audience. I think this is an extremely big deal when you talk to anybody about uh, trying to figure out how do I get to my audience and trying to get it out across all of the different platforms. Essentially, you've solved this problem. Yeah, I mean, we, we're kind of our, you know, our own first customer, as it were. We spent the last five years um, building um, our own kind of joint platform to be able to, as I said, a, a very high quality with adapted bitrate streaming and all, of, and all of the kind of the gizmos under the hood, be able to make it super simple to to transcode and then distribute across all of the 360 and, and VR channels. Um, and also making sure that you know, controllers work um, and, and, and also you know, in over 28 languages and there's subtitling and so on. So we've kind of taken what we've built for ourselves. <clears throat> we've then productized that um, because we've seen an increase in demand from, you know, from our existing clients like Sky, uh, but also new partners like Medical Realities, um, you know, the surgery training uh, business and VTime and, and others. To, as they're creating more and more great immersive content, they don't just want to be putting it onto Facebook and YouTube and potentially you know, platforms such as Jaunt, they want to be building their own, uh, own you know, owned and operated channels as well. So uh, we've created a turnkey solution um, for them to not worry about all of the hard work that our engineering team in, in San Mateo do to make it work seamlessly, but so that they can then just manage their content, distribute it, and then importantly learn from it through the intelligence suite. Say I create a 360 film, yep. and uh, I have got different types of cameras, and I want to upload different ones, and your platform is able to take in all of those different types of codecs. Yeah, so we, we, we will support um, all the kind of standard codecs that you'll be uploading. You would then create a single kind of gold quality, high res, you know, whether it be pro res or whatever version of that film. Um, once you've uploaded that to the XR platform, we will then take care of all of the transcoding of that of that of that piece. It's up That's to nice a, yeah. So it's up to about 42 different versions of, of uh, that file, which is then completely optimized to work, uh, you know, mono and stereo with all the different types of ambisonic, including things like Dolby Atmos and so on, uh, to be able to work then across all of the 360 and uh, VR uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. That's very much concurrent, all done in the cloud, so super fast. That happens in minutes. Um, and then also we've built in other tools to be able to manage interactivity, for example, within that content. Um, and then the Jaunt, so that's all done within the Media Manager, uh, part of the, the, the uh, platform. And then the Jaunt player then means that you can then distribute that uh, across all of those platforms, build out your own application on top of, a, on top of our software, and then um, the, the intelligence suite then allows you to get not just kind of your standard analytics, which you'd expect from a video platform, but also the more kind of immersive specific like heat mapping and so on. Mm -hmm. And even taking the uh, crowdsourced data of where people are looking every tenth of a second and turning that into a product that we call Compass, which then allows um, you to be able to sit back in a kind of 2D 16 by nine environment and, and watch a 360 video based on where the crowd has watched that video over time, which is pretty special. From a commercial perspective too, if you've got you know, product placement or brand advertising or whatever within the film, it allows you to have confidence that people have actually seen those messages or, or even potentially to place those messages differently in order that people do see them in, in the narrative. So how does this work um, as if I wanted to have access to it as a general sort of user who, you know, I don't have a company, I just want to upload maybe a, a 360 film or a show that's like, you know, that's weekly. Do I have to pay a subscription to have access to it and be able to upload a certain amount? So this is very much an enterprise solution. Um, this is um, for companies, you know, whether it be media companies or IP holders or mobile operators and so on, to be able to build out their own uh, immersive content applications. The XR platform is more for people who want to really build out their own application at scale, um, but we still have that, that whole kind of model where we're supporting creators to drive the industry through the joint platform as well. 
So how would you monetize all of the content that goes up on the XR platform? Well, that's really up to the client themselves. Um, you know, we're not looking to build um, you know, a, a, an advertising platform. There are other specialist immersive content ab advertising platforms out there like Omnibirth and so on. Um, we're not looking to build uh, CRM platforms and ident identification and verification platforms. You know, so if you're, um, let's say, a company like Sky, um, you're able to take the Jaunt XR platform to be able to do all of your media management and play out uh, of that immersive content, but then also using APIs and, and other technology, you kind of plug in your existing IDMV tools, your existing play, um, payment tools, and so on. So you could overlay transaction video on demand, subscription video on demand, advertising integration, and so on, uh, but that can then kind of sit on top of the technology that, that we provide. Now, with regards to the cross-platform, on which platforms can, can it work on? Because I saw Android out there, I saw some Oculus, yeah, so some it's, mixed reality. So it's kind of, um, I, probably won't, I probably won't remember all of them, but I'll try. So um, HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, PlayStation VR, and Google Daydream, Gear VR, um, Android, iOS, um, Windows Mixed Reality, uh, WebGL, so just websites. We're also then creating it for uh, iOS and Android native applications. Because it, an interesting part is, you know, a lot of the conversations we're having with our partners is some of them want to be able to create a standalone VR application or standalone immersive content application, which is built in Unity and works across all of the, you know, Steam and Oculus and so on, so that they can then have a, a true end-to-end -end kind of immersive experience using controllers and so on. Others are maybe a little bit more, you could say, pragmatic and saying, well, look, we've already got a mobile application with you know, a few million users, <coughs> which has got no immersive content in it whatsoever, but has got quite a lot of video viewing. We'd like to be able to plug a channel into that, mm -hmm. which kind of ups, upgrades it to be able to do uh, VR content, for example. Um, so the XR platform allows you to do both of those things. Part of the benefit of working with Jaunt on the XR platform is you kind of sit on our shoulders, as it were. We're doing all of this work anyway to make, make sure that we're um, working at the best quality across all these platforms, kind of old and new, not that any are really that old. Um, and, and as an XR platform partner, you also then kind of get that, that advantage. And now, what I also saw, which I thought was quite interesting, was kind of like a live mixing of 360, so you get to choose between uh, different camera options. Yep. Uh, and is that also part of it as well, or is that something separate? No, that's part of it. Again, it's relatively simple to be able to kind of create different kind of, kind of gizmos and experiences and put them in a standalone application. Um, it doesn't scale um, and it can be quite expensive. So, so our approach really is to, is to you know, where we think, when we think about interactivity, for example, how do we build that functionality in such a way that it is plug and play in the XR platform, that you don't need to have any coding experience to make it work that it is just a CMS-based kind of WYSIWYG type experience. So yes, we've built, for example, multi-camera switching interactivity into, uh, into the XR platform, which allows you to put kind of hotspots within, within the experience to, so that you can then kind of switch different cameras, but we've done it in such a way that it is just uploading and management of assets mm -hmm. in a CMS in, the, in kind of the media manager part of the, the uh, platform, rather than having to then do kind of custom code to make that work. Uh, and you'll see more through 2018 uh, kind of interactivity as well as AR, as well as um, kind of getting into six stop as well. But we'll be kind of almost kind of templatizing that so that it's easier for most users to, to do at scale. What we talked about before, which I thought was quite interesting, was how you used to work in the mobile industry and how you were talking about everyone wanted lots of apps and then suddenly there were too many apps and they had to kind of scale it down. And this is, you guys are trying to, I mean, this is very early stages of both virtual, augmented, and mixed reality. Yeah. You guys are trying to see the future and sort of encompass all of that, right? Yes. Uh, you know, as I said, when I, when I used to work at Orange and, and EE and, and, and other companies too, um, I used to actually run Digital at Sky. Um, you know, we've kind of already gone through this life cycle where, you know, everyone got super excited about mobile apps and then there was a plethora of mobile apps. And then suddenly people realized that they probably had too many and that most of them weren't being used. And so they kind of all got kind of stacked back together and everyone went through a process to say, well, actually, let's just have one application that will do everything that we kind of need it to do within reason. We are very cognizant of that. And, and one of the ways that we've um, reacted to that thought is, you know, some, as I said before, some people may want to be able to have a standalone VR app sitting alongside their other applications, but some people might just want to put immersive, um, you know, technology and capability and experiences into their existing application. So let's allow them to do that too. Mm -hmm. Similarly with VR and AR, at the moment as an industry, we kind of think a little bit about those things separately. But actually, 
we think about them just being immersive assets. Walk around CES and you're increasingly seeing you know, VR and AR, both also from a kind of viewing perspective, starting to kind of blend together. Um, so we want to be future-proofing what we can give to our partners so that they can um, create and also distribute in a seamless way um, a mix of kind of VR, AR, and MR assets because consumers increasingly won't see them as separate things. They'll just see it as, they're just kind of, it's just great content that they want to experience on their phone or on a pair of, on a headset or whatever. So yeah, so we want to be able to um, be a little bit more thoughtful about that and make sure that we're creating something which is future-proof for our partners. What are you looking to do for this year? So 2018 for us is, um, you know, there's both sides of our business. We'll be doing a lot more great production work. Um, some really exciting things that are in the, in the pipeline and in post-production right now. Um, I think you'll see that becoming increasingly interactive um, as, the, as the, the audience grows for who can actually experience that interactive. Um, we actually just last week launched um, seven main films and about 23 films in total with the Olympic Channel for the one up to the Winter Olympics. And so we're seeing a lot more kind of serious content coming through, not just kind of one-off pieces of, of, uh, of content. So I think you'll see our production you know, really growing uh, through 2018, becoming more interactive and also a lot more AR and kind of mixed reality as well. And then on, on the XR platform, you know, we're really just getting going. We, we launched, we're pretty, you know, really officially launching it at CES. We've already got uh, some great clients uh, who are actually live on the platform. You know, Medical Realities is live on, on the platform. Um, the VTime integration is really fun. Um, you know, it allows you to be, actually be on the VTime platform and meet up with your friends and avatars of your friends in the VTime experience, but be sitting around Paul McCartney's piano or sitting you know, on, on Everest uh, in the North Face uh, experience. That's the kind of production side of the, our, our ambition for 2018. And then from a distribution side, you know, the XR platform, we're really only just launching at CES. 2018 will really be um, kind of scaling that business, uh, working with a number of new partners. Yeah, it's a year of growth for us. The other thing is we'll, from an international perspective, there'll be more growth. Um, We'll be, we're, there's a lot of demand to be working in a lot of other territories. Um, again, mostly through partnerships. You know, I run in, I, not, not necessarily. Um, you know, I, so I run joint outside of US and Canada, um, which right now is predominantly the London office. That will double in size this year. Um, we also have the joint venture in China uh, with Shanghai Media Group and China Media Capital. That's really starting to motor and we're seeing some great um, both production and also technology application happening in the China, China region. We're also though, looking at kind of quite strategic partnerships in other territories. It's not our ambition to just kind of put a bunch of people, uh, you know, in a joint office in each of these territories because it's not, you know, it's hard and expensive to scale in that way. But we're seeing a lot of um, kind of win-win partnership opportunities where, um, where potentially a, a company has really deep relationships with brands and IP holders in that particular territory, which are quite specialist, but they also wanted to get into immersive content production and distribution, we can kind of bring that to the table. Mm -hmm. And so we can create these kind of preferred or strategic partnerships in, the, in each of these territories. So there's a lot of discussions that, is, that are going on there and you'll be hearing more about those too. Fantastic. Well, is there a website that we can go to to find out more about both you and uh, the XR? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, if you just go to jauntbr.com, um, then uh, you will be able to navigate to uh, all of the information about the XR platform, about our content. You can watch our content there too. And if you could really be bothered, you would find my bio. But I'm sure that most people aren't that interested. Fantastic. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you'll be doing this year and uh, what you guys are making. Uh, head over to VRFocus.com if you want to find out more about virtual reality or other immersive technologies, and I will see you there. And I will say one last thing. Thank you to VR Focus for all your support because uh, they are a great support of the industry and also of Jaunt, so thank you.